That's uh, significant. That was the, uh, the war I was involved in, Vietnam. And uh, I proudly served my country. Would you, veterans, all veterans, would you stand for a moment? All the veterans, please stand. I'm just a little bit more. Set apart by him, 
and for him. Now we need to set ourselves aside. Now the word contend, I basically put in there on purpose, contend is different than being contentious. To contend means to maintain a value or a principle, to compete. And right now we do have a, a lot of competition going on for the attention of men and for the hearts and souls of men and women. The world of flesh of the devil is after your kids and after your marriage and after your husband and after your wife. So you don't need to compete with that, but with the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ. To challenge those that push back, we've got to work for them. Jesus Christ does make a difference. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus does make a difference. We challenge, but of course, uh, uh, we challenge with a, with a, with a pushback. Uh, the world is going to hell, folks. The world is going to hell in the best lane, and we cannot be passively sitting back and letting the world go to hell. The devil is after our families, and after our homes, and after our system. The, our America, the great, will end up being in ruins unless you and I stand up and be counted for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? So we push back. We push back when they push us but with a word of challenge. Contentions, of course, means uh, you can touch it. You can touch it about things. You can carry your feelings on your sleeve. Everything offensive. Oh, don't, don't be so harsh. Don't be so hard. Uh, don't be so crude. Uh, don't, don't, don't tell people about hell. Don't tell people about devil. Because the devil, you might scare them away. And, you know, we don't want to scare people. We want people to come to know Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, controversial. People can, who are contentious are just controversial. They get wrapped up in so much stuff. They, they fight about so many things. Uh, these are people who will go to bat for the whale and the fish and, uh, and the air, and they don't care if people are lost and going to hell. Contentious people, uh, controversial, divisive, notorious. They, they're on the liability column. The, the people who are contending for the gospel are on the asset column. We're the ones who contribute. It's a church who has established hospitals. It's a church who's built orphanages. It's a church that built tremendous uh, uh, institutions of higher education. It's a church of Jesus Christ. We receive to give, amen? We have been blessed to bless. So would you open your outline with me, please, as we look at a few things together. Now, Jude, a, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jude, a servant. By the way, that's, a, that's next to the last book of the Bible. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, verse 1. The word servant is uh, basically in, in, the, in the Greek context as a doulos, someone who is not enslaved against his will, but someone who is given over to service with a glad heart. That's what a doulos, a servant is. And that's what a Christian ought to be protected. It is not that we're under obligation, that I have to do it, and better yet, is that I get to do it because God is so good, amen? And God is so good to me, he loves me. So when he says a servant of Jesus Christ, I want you to think of someone who has willingly said to him, here I am, use me, use my time, use my talent, use my treasure. I want to be an instrument in the hands of a mighty God. And that's what you are, a doulos, a servant, someone who is willing, and you need to be projected that nobody is obligating you. It ought to come from your heart. So again, a bond servant, there's got to be the spirit of submission to the Lord with a willingness of heart and spirit. So number one, in the introduction, the believers are addressed and they're encouraged. The believers are addressed and they're, they're encouraged. And we decided to have this Memorial Day, Veterans Memorial Day, as an encouragement also. And the soldiers of Jesus Christ are being encouraged. To those who have been called, they've been what? Called. Called. Now this call has a two-side dimension to it. First of all, there's a call of salvation. I appreciate that. I appreciate that the Jesus who came to seek and to save that which was lost brought me under a time of conviction. When the Holy Spirit allowed me to see light and I saw the seriousness of my condition, the seriousness of sin, and I saw the danger that my soul was under. And I repented of my sin, and I cried out to him, and he saved me. He called me to salvation. No one comes to him unless they're called to salvation. But after you're called to salvation, you're called to serve. You're called to service. And this is where, where it really gets beautiful, and it gets serious, because now you and I are privileged. The individual believer is called 
to, to serve. He's also not only called, but he's loved. He's loved. And by the way, the word love here has a sanctifying effect. It's like when you marry. When you marry. See, when you marry, you've, you've fallen in love with someone, and in essence, what that means is you're setting your stuff aside for that person, yes or no? Yes. You're setting yourself aside for that person. That person is setting himself or herself aside for you. So when we are, uh, are loved by Him, that means that you and I are being sanctified by God for Him. Now you and I need to set, set ourselves aside for Him. And as a soldier of Jesus Christ, you cannot be effective if you have two lords, two masters, two uh, captains of your salvation. So loved by Him, He set me apart from Him. Now I love Him, so I set myself apart from Him. But notice that letter says kept, kept by the Lord Jesus Christ. When I read this scripture, a scripture that I'm very familiar with, I still had to say, wow. That's not Greek, it's just slang. Wow. <laughs> because not, notice that. I have been loved by God, but again, guess who's keeping me? The Lord Jesus Christ. He came to live inside the believer. Amen. So he came to live inside of me, and now this is, I believe, why Paul could say, and I can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because we're in the hollow of the Lord's hand. Amen. Soldiers of Jesus Christ, you are in His hands, and no one can snatch you away. So the next one, not only number one, but notice number two. Eh? And I know, excuse me, let me, let me just mention to you that when, when the, the, the matter of, of calling is when He sets you aside for something beautiful. Now, a call establishes a new perimeter. In other words, now uh, it's like a giant guardrail. When, when you feel, when you know that you've been called to salvation and you understand you've been called to service, it's all of a sudden, you know, there's, a, there's these big old guard, guard rows, not to enslave you, but to direct you. Now all of a sudden, you have the capacity and the understanding to say no to certain things. But also you have the willingness and the love to say yes to what you need to say yes to. So you can say no to the world, the flesh, and the devil. You can say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say yes to the God of heaven. You can say yes to the wooing and calling of the Holy Spirit. So the God does go up because now you've been called. You're not just anybody. You're God's property. Amen. You're God's somebody. So this helps you to say no when you need to say no. And yes when you need to say yes. So number two, the believers are addressed and blessed. How many of you like to be blessed? Amen. I love to be blessed. Uh, I receive scripture that he blesses to bless so that we might be a blessing. He gives us so we might get. So in this case, the believers are blessed. They're blessed physically, they're blessed emotionally, and they're blessed spiritually. Three things. Mercy, peace, and love be yours. But notice the Bible uses the word in abundance. I recall the words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You might have in abundance, right? So he doesn't want to just fill your cup with mercy. He wants your cup to be overflowing with mercy. Why? Because people who understand how merciful God has been to them will in turn be merciful to other people. Amen? Amen. Would you agree with me that God is merciful? Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad He doesn't give you what you deserve? Amen. <clears throat> Have you ever heard anybody complain and say, oh, I just wish God would give me what I deserve? You don't know what you're asking. Amen. If God were to give you and to give me what I deserve, what you deserve, will be unjust. God is merciful in that. When you understand that and you bask in that truth, guess what? You're just a nicer person. Amen? Amen. You've been nice to yourself. You look in the mirror, you're not mad at yourself anymore. I am a recipient of God's mercy. If, I, if God is merciful towards me, then in turn, I am merciful to other, towards other people. But not only mercy, We've talked in this place many times and we've been teaching that, 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 that God has three types of peace for all people. Not all people will enjoy, but that's the peace that God has for all people. He has spiritual peace that He's offering all mankind. That happens only when you become a believer. The Bible says that we, we experience the peace of God, Romans 5.1. And then you experience personal peace. Uh, 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 Colossians 3.15 talks about the peace of God that surpasses or, or that governs your mind and your heart. So God wants you to have spiritual peace. Then he wants you to have personal peace. And then he wants you to be at peace with your brother and your sister. And he wants that, that peace inside of you to be in abundance. You know why? Because people who enjoy peace are peaceable. Anyway. I mean, they just get along with people a little better. You get along better with your husband. You get along better with your wife. You get along better with your parents or your, or your children. 
you just you just nice, amen. You just nice. Somebody said be nice. Yeah. What do you need to be? So yeah, spiritual, personal, and then relational. And then the Bible also talks about love. You know that love and, and again. Did you already leave me, brother? Okay, amen. Don't leave me yet. Okay. And it talks about the love. Love, love has to do with that agape of God, that unconditional. Isn't it true that love covers a multitude of sins? Yes. Now, well, why would God love us like that? Well, there's a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> think about your life. Think about my life. Think about all the stuff that. So not only does He want you to have mercy in abundance and enjoy peace in abundance, but He wants you to experience His love in abundance again. Because when you understand that His love has covered a multitude of your sins, guess what? Your love will cover a multitude of other people's sins. Instead of being harsh and critical, instead of being uh, rude, and, and standoffish, you're going to love them. Then better they don't, they don't speak your language. <laughs> uh, uh, Brother Jorge and, and Brother Dan and I went to a, a past place to an orphanage. And we met so many missionaries there. They were there volunteering from Canada and North America. They were there because they just loved God. And they were filled with so much love. They were loving boys and girls that had been rejected and abandoned by them. By an adult generation that was too busy or too occupied or maybe victims of circumstances, abandoning children. And here are our mission. Some of them don't speak a word of Spanish. And yet, because of the communicating with them, they were loving on those children and caring for them. That's the kind of love God wants all of us to have. And he says, get a bunch of Can you imagine? Just, just use your imagination. Can you imagine if all of us in this room, all of us, all of us, in abundance, would be enjoying his peace? mercy and his love. Do you think things would be better in this church? 